Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Real McCoy Radio, episode 11 to be specific. Um, I've got a longtime friend, client, uh, you could call us business partners and sometimes. Um, our relationship is getting diverse and it's also getting pretty long, but uh, please help me welcome Yuri Diogenes to the show. Thanks, Greg. Uh, one more partnership. Yeah, you got a, it, man. a decade now. Yeah. <laughs> so pretty happy to be here. Yeah. So... You know, you like like we mentioned, our you know friendship has covered a lot of different territory. Um, we uh, originally met back in it was 2011, I believe, um, at one a show I was competing in and had some clients in. Um, and you know, who who knows when you shake someone's hand that you're going to be friends for the next 10 years? I didn't really know what I was getting into. <laughs> <laughs> it was worth it, right? Yeah, yeah. But it's been absolute. Um, pleasure to be able to work with you, you know, as an athlete and then, you know, take the lessons that we learned, um, which is what we're going to get into today, kind of using you losing a hundred pounds, um, as an introduction to talk about a few different things, but, um, you know, you're a highly accomplished guy, um, in your career, athletically in your family life. Um, so I think you have a lot of a wisdom to pass on that people can really learn from. Well, um, as you said, everything started back in 2011, and, and to me, that was a transformation on its own because uh, it changed everything that I've done since that day. Mm -hmm. And when I moved to U.S. in 2003, I was a tunnel vision to grow in my career at no matter what. And this no matter what, although it sounds really nice, I'm going to do no matter what, but there will be consequences. Sure. When you say no matter what, you are every, actually putting a lot of things aside and you are willing to compromise all aspects of life, including your own health, mm -hmm. right? So that's really what led me to that point that I needed assistance to change. And that's when <laughs> you came in and, and changed everything, right? Yeah. Well, that's, um, we'll kind of get right into it. And, um, you know, just so everybody knows where we're at, you know, when, at, right after we met, we started training together and you went on a journey to lose over 100 pounds. Before we talk about how we did that, talk a little bit about what you're just kind of leading into about that no matter what career focus that you had. What led you into a place, what lifestyle factors led you to need to lose 100 pounds? Yeah, it is the tunnel vision. And a lot of people, they praise the tunnel vision to accomplish things, but it's very dangerous actually. Because as I said, if you have the tunnel vision and you are willing to compromise many aspects of your life to do what you, you got to do. Uh, there will be consequences that could be consequences that it will be hard to recover in the future, right? Yeah. So to me, it was health because I was working a lot since I was focusing on my career. So I didn't really have time to eat properly yep. throughout the day. So I was eating a lot of junk food, leaving the work after hours. Uh, so left work just pass by Wendy's and uh, get the sandwich and that was it, right? So this whole bad habit uh, continued to carry on and, and you really don't realize until a certain point because it's, you keep going. And, and I am a guy that I always work it out. So I'm a living proof that work it out on its own, it would not make you in a, in a good shape, right? Yeah. What you eat is really uh, very important. You can't outrun a bad diet. No. You, you cannot. I was working out every day. I always did. Yeah. Right? I always did. So what was wrong? I was always the fat guy with big arm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I really, uh, throughout many years, I was like, well, I'm strong. I can lift that. I have big arm. But I was fat. Yeah. That's the reality. I was fat and I was not healthy inside. Yeah. But I didn't realize. That. It took me a really long time to really realize. Yeah. Uh, there were many triggers along the way but there were a specific moment that really, it was the trigger. So piling on that weight was bad eating habits, probably high stress, probably not sleeping a lot. Um, you, were, you were exercising, but probably not optimally. But yeah. even if I was optimally, yeah, sure. the of combination course. of everything else, it was yeah. a disaster, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, as you said, you cannot. And what did your weight get up to? 285, yeah. the peak, The peak. I think it was 285 uh, pounds, which was a lot uh, on my body at that point. It started uh, affecting my knees. I started developing arthritis. Yeah. So it was tough. 
And I remember you kind of saying a turning point was like trying to get off the ground playing with your kids. And it was yeah. like, it was painful. And Because my youngest, she was born in 2008. So yeah. by the time that I achieved my peak uh, as, as uh, obese, I w she was two years and a half probably. And she was extremely active, right? Uh, there were different triggers uh, before that. Uh, for example, I remember trying to just jog with that weight. I couldn't, and so I hurt my knee, so I started doing a treatment to do injections on my knee so I could unlock my knee because it, it was getting locked. Um, and that I did for uh, some months, but emotionally, that what the main trigger was being able to play with my kid. Yeah, that affected me emotionally a lot Yeah, because I was like, man, I feel like I'm the grandpa of this kid. Yeah. <laughs> But that's a important point that I think sometimes, unfortunately, people have to get there where they're so frustrated or something happens where they're like, you know what, screw this, man, like I got to change. Yeah. And sometimes if they don't have that moment, you know, they can go on and, and on. And sometimes you got to have this emotional yeah, moment exactly. because uh, even knew, even uh, I knew that health wise, I was really bad. Mm -hmm. It was still not enough to drive me to change. It was the emotional part that did. Yeah, sure. Wow. Okay, so um, you got to that point, um, and then I believe a former client of mine, Ruben, invited you out to the bodybuilding show where we met, and you decided, like, hey, it's time to time to do that, time to lose the weight. Um, tell a little bit about the story of how we lost the weight and over how much time. Well, uh, I think the first thing that I that I remember is going to the your old gym uh, in Plano and. Uh, you were just a uh, first week post show. Uh, I think it was uh, the Texas NPC. I don't yeah, Heart know. of Texas. Heart of Texas, yep. right? And you were swole, you were gigantic, <laughs> you know? And I'm like, this guy is gonna laugh at me when I say that I want to compete, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, uh, and you didn't, right? You, you actually encouraged me. And I think that was really something that helped me to start see a light at the end of the tunnel and say, wow, he believes I can do it. So. Why not believe I can do as well? I yeah. think it's this that moment was very important because I came to you saying a, a fat guy, you know, without any hope or anything, saying that I want to compete, and and you immediately jump in and say, yeah, let's do it, right? So yeah. that to me was a very important point. Okay. Th that encouragement and uh, the belief that we we're gonna do it, and there is a roadmap to get there, mm -hmm. right? And my. Uh, I never aimed to do that in over one year. I knew it was impossible because yep. I had multiple stages to go through. I need to lose a lot of fat, then I need to build muscle. So it takes time yeah. uh, and I'm okay with that. And I also remember you asking me about that when we were talking about the diet, he said, you said, we can go steady uh, and slow or we can go hard and fast. Yeah. I'm like, let's go hard and fast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we That's went- That's still your style today. Yes. <laughs> It's it's hard and fast, but it's is effective. I mean, yeah. it's 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 hard at the beginning. And I remember that was really hard the first three weeks, and uh, but as we continue to move, and I was seeing the results, that was feeding me to continue to move forward. Right, so that was very important to see results and continue to move forward. Now I did something extremely radical because it was working, and I didn't want to change. Mm -hmm. Which was uh, th during one year, I basically ate the same thing. Yeah six times a day. I mean, exactly the same food. Yeah. And I remember you asking me, you want to change? <laughs> and I'm like, nope, <laughs> let's continue doing the same thing because yeah. it's working. Yeah. And uh, I, I'm not sure if this is the, the, the best approach for some other people. To me, it worked and I do not regret. You are very Spartan about it. Yeah, just a very minimalist on um, ways to go about it. It was a very Spartan mentality. Um, not tunnel vision, because you obviously still worked, but right. I think some of your tun tunnel vision uh, weighed in on your weight loss journey. Yeah, yeah. Uh, absolutely. And, and I was focused, uh, I had a tunnel vision to get that objective accomplished, mm -hmm. but I was aware of my surround areas, and that's was very important. For example, I remember the first three months, I was going crazy, my wife started complaining, and she said, well, you, I think you should stop this diet because you are really grumpy. And uh, I was like, whoa, I need to control myself so I do not expose yeah. to people around me that I'm going through this struggle. Yeah. So that brought me awareness to not, uh, to not uh, use that opportunity to, 
you know, be grumpy with others that has nothing to do with my own journey, right? Yeah. So I think that it was an important point to me, just uh, be more self-aware. Um, so we'll get into some, uh, start to get some advice here. Um, what do you think it is that separates people who are able to lose weight um, and the people that cannot? So uh, that's very controversial because uh, there are people that has, they, they actually do have health conditions that will impact them to lose weight. You know that you are training. Uh, and that, that category of people, I truly respect the fact that they have conditions, health conditions that will impact them how to lose. But the vast majority of people, they are people that do not lose weight because they already start defeating themselves, right? How many times you've seen people say, wow, that's too hard, I cannot do that. At that moment that you already defeat yourself at the beginning, don't even try, you're gonna fail. It's a fact. I, know, I say that because I have a lot of mentees at work yep. that I train to get to the next level. And when I, I give them tasks to do, there are two groups. One will say, whoa, let's do it, I'm excited. Yeah. And there's the other one say, wow, there's a lot of things and I'm, I'm not <laughs> sure if I can do it. Yeah. He will not do it. You already know. He, you, I already know that he is going to fail. Yeah. You know, and the reason why he's going to fail is because there are two things. First, not only he defeat himself uh, at the beginning, so throughout the, the, the journey, he will always come back to the same mindset and say, man, that's too hard. That's too hard. So he will never go 100% because it's too hard. So why go anyway? Yeah. So he will never give 100% of his effort. A failure, you're probably afraid of failure. Yes. You're already like, I don't, I'm afraid that I'm going to fail, so I just better not totally apply myself. And if he fails, at the end, he will have excuse to say, I knew it was impossible. I told you. I yeah. told you. Yeah. So there is also this uh, this uh, thing of, uh, is, a, is a protect mechanism. Yeah. It's a way for me to validate mm -hmm. my mindset and tell you, I told you I was not able to do it. Yeah. So those two group of people uh, is our group of people that I work. And this is not only about physical uh, uh, fitness, it's about mindset for anything you do. If you defeat yourself in the beginning, you're gonna fail, right? So I would say that people that are sometimes have hard time to lose weight, that's one aspect. Mm -hmm. They defeat right, right in the beginning. The other aspect is consistency. Because there are people that I that we met throughout those all transformations that we did together for all those years, that they were on fire on day one, they were on fire on the first week, and then let after me, a month. Let me stop and explain that for a moment. So, we, um, you helped me with transformation challenges. I think we did what five, yeah, maybe six, yeah, um, where we had you know somewhere of a hundred to two hundred people from around the world participating in challenges. And, uh, and you were in that, that time serving as kind of a coach, um, just like in when we're going to launch the 12 week empowerment challenges, um, where you'll be a success mentor. So just to like the context that we went through these challenges where we were able to observe people that were successful and not successful. Yeah. Sorry. And one thing that I noticed, uh, with people that were, uh, not success, although they we had a perception in the beginning that they will be the best ones at the end mm -hmm. because they were so on fire, so motivated. Uh, but they they start to fade away throughout the challenge is because they were not consistent. Yeah. So that's the thing. They were on fire at the beginning. Then they don't see the result that they were expecting yeah. right away. So they start to skip stages. Instead of having a team every, uh, every other week, they will have every week, right? So they start... Uh, not following the plan accurately. Yeah. And, and that's that's a problem. Consistency is extremely important. Yeah, I think it's actually more important than the plan itself. I think it, you can be consistent on a, on a bad plan and get success more so than being inconsistent on the perfect plan. True. So it's, it's I think, almost the, the most important thing. And I, I looked for this, actually, when I was uh, making a Facebook post a few weeks ago. Um, I don't remember who said the quote, but it was a, a bodybuilder, Lee Labrada or somebody similar of that era that was saying, you know, success in changing your physique or success in bodybuilding is more about like 
punching the clock and doing those workouts time in and time again than it is about a heroic effort in the gym. Mm -hmm. Like that, that one heroic workout, while it may be good, if you aren't doing everything else consistent, you're better off like, you know, punching the clock and, and treating it like a job. Yep. And, and that's the hard part for a lot of people, you know, because yeah, it's they, not easy. It's, that's... Not, it's not easy. It's <laughs> not easy at all. And that's why throughout those uh, transformation, we've seen many cases like that where people were on fire and, and, and fade away. And the root cause of that problem was the consistency. They were not able to consistently execute the plan day in and day out. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to rearrange our questions just for the flow of conversation here. So um, we've hosted challenges of multiple lengths, you know, kind of 12 weeks is my favorite amount of time because it's long enough to see results, but not so long that it, you know, it gets to be too long. Like it's a, a, a good amount of time to devote to a goal. Um, we've seen people like, you know, be hot in the first few weeks and kind of go through these phases, right? Like the first few weeks, pretty much everyone does good yeah, um, because it's exciting and it's new. Then in the middle, like, you know, people start to fall off, um, people get inconsistent. And then generally, like if they've made it to the end, they'll finish strong because it's there's some mot natural motivation that it's almost over. But what um, what have, have we learned about those those phases and what people can expect to experience over 12 weeks? Uh, I think you summarized pretty well about the, f the first week and even the first month is very exciting and everything. Uh, but. There will be a group of people that um, will fade away throughout the, the challenge. Uh, but one thing that I like about the challenge that we are about to, to launch is that although it's a group approach, as many other challenges we've done, there is a one-on-one -on -one, -on -one aspect of it. That's one point. The other point is all the ones that we've done, everyone was chasing a prize at the end, a prize at the end. So there was also that competition feeling where you could have done really well, but you're going to have to be compared with another person. So now is not only about you and your own journey. Mm -hmm. It's about you and your own journey compared to someone else. Yeah. So that on itself sometimes make, made people not so happy because they were like, I did great on my perspective. Yeah. And I've been evaluated with this guy that already had a body that was somehow in shape. Yeah. So it's not fair. So there is this aspect. So that's to me is one of the biggest advantages of this is that everyone can be a winner at the end because yeah. everyone has its own set of goals mm -hmm. and we are not comparing uh, people and sure. say, here's your, what is your goal? Let's work to make uh, this goal achievable in the next, uh, uh, at the end of the challenge. And if you are able to accomplish, then you won what you wanted, right? Yeah. So the encouragement to you is way better. Uh, and I think that this will keep uh, the flow of uh, consistency more steady rather than you have people that are right here, others that are right here, because now everyone is working on their own goals. Yeah. You know, so I, I think that this model has this advantage, mm -hmm. the one-on-one -on -one approach and everyone has its set of goals. Yeah. And we don't need to compare anyone. Yeah, no, I think that's an excellent point. And on the, the timeline thing, I think what we touched on in the beginning, what was successful for you. And I actually still, I preach this to when I take on new clients, any of my clients listening know that they heard this message. And that is like, I'll usually, um, if I'm taking on a new training client, I'll ask them to front load their sessions. Like, look, I know this is expensive, um, but I would rather see you more often in the beginning because you build up momentum. And so I think that's such an important um, thing when you're thinking about making it a, an entire 12 weeks to know that it's it's not unusual to lose motivation at week four or five. That's you're very normal experiencing that. And and if you can expect to to feel it, then you can be prepared for it. Yeah. And that way we can get more people to week 12 because that's you know, that's obviously the goal for us is how can we as coaches and mentors get people through that 12 weeks. Mm -hmm. So preparation for that, that dip that they're going to feel. And I would, uh, tell me if you agree. I, I usually tell people that you're going to feel better before you look better. Like, don't you th think that you feel your results before it maybe shows up on the scale or in the mirror? Yeah. Because first of all, this scale is very tricky, uh, yeah. <laughs> throughout those, uh, three months, you're going to be gaining muscle. 
So the chances that you are the scale is not even moved sometimes, but you look better because you are changing your body composition is very high. So scale is not really a good way to measure your success. Yeah. I would say that it's much better for you to evaluate when you look at the mirror and when you wear your clothes and you feel better. Mm -hmm. So absolutely, you're going to feel better uh, uh, before you look way better. Yeah. Because uh, of this, this change in body composition that is going to happen throughout those three months, yeah. right? So don't get stuck with the scale. That's, that's one thing that is very important to emphasize. Especially the ladies, right? Yes. <laughs> so scale is, is tricky. Very tricky. Okay, so we, we kind of touched on this a bit, but we've done challenges together in the past. Now we're ready to launch um, 12 week empowerment challenges, something I'm really excited about and something that I want to kind of move my training business into doing these challenges again. Um, you're going to be a success mentor um, in the challenge. Um, what have we learned and why will this challenge be our, be our best one yet? Uh, I think I touched a little bit on this. Uh... The reason why I'm betting a lot on this challenge and, and it will be the best one yet is because of those that individual approach that we are going to have. You are going to talk to each uh, person that enrolled to this challenge to establish their profile and their goal, right? So that's, that's unique. We never had that before. No. We had a plan, uh, you know, based on basic or advanced, and we throw that plan and it worked. But... We never had that 101. Yeah. So now we'll onboard people individually, assess their goals, and put them on into programs that fit their goals. And while many of the coaching they're going to get from us through the challenge will be the same, um, the plan that they're on will be more fitting to them. Yeah, absolutely. So that that's that's individual approach is very important. Um, so I think that it changed completely the game. The other thing is, again, we are not comparing this group uh, among them. So we are not forcing them to take pictures and, 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 and share to show how they're... Because that, there is a good aspect of uh, motivating others. But the reality is a lot of people, they don't feel good in sharing you know, their pictures with others uh, throughout this initial phase. There are very few people that are okay in sharing that their belly is not looks good and things like that. So it's very personal. Yeah. Okay. So you can still take those pictures and, and save on your own, which I truly recommend mm -hmm. because they will, uh, you're going to have a record on how you look on every single week. So I always recommend take pictures because it creates you, creates these records that you can compare. And if you feel good at the end and you want to post or, you know, talk about it, do it. We have to, like, because the way we hosted it before, the photos, Progress photos were public. Um, now with the training app that we're using, they can upload their progress photos, for instance, if they want us to assess them um, to where they can be held privately, where only um, I or them can see it. Um, but they can also, s versus the whole anyone participating being able but to. But do, do, you, do you also encourage them to? Yeah, no, I think that's great. I think you'll really be proud to look back over a set amount of time and see like, because you don't, it's like watching water boil, right? Like it doesn't happen if you're staring at it. Like you don't feel like you're changing. It's not until, you know, you maybe look at those photos side by side and, and really analyze like, oh, wow, like look how much I came in in the waist or, oh my, you look at yourself in the mirror from the front, obviously, but maybe you look at the photo of your backside and see some big, big changes there. Yep, yep. So yeah, I definitely encourage that. Yeah, I think that this challenge has those unique aspects that uh, people are going to enjoy and they will get m a lot of things out of it. Uh, and we're still going to have the group, the aspect of the group to help each other. Yeah. So we keep that little community together to help each other uh, to continue to move forward. But we have the one on one aspect as well. Yeah. So it's a, a really good combination. And I like to like, you know, I really enjoy I want people to leave after 12 weeks having learned how to take control of their results. So that we will have a weekly lessons on how to learn, how to produce results. So at the end of it, not only did you get great results, you learned how to do it, which I think will be really exciting. Yeah, and it's good because you can get all those learnings and carry on. Because one thing that uh, I also noticed uh, throughout those five challenges that a lot of people, they some people carry on, 
but most didn't. Most people went back yeah. probably to the same weight, you know. And, and that's the challenge with, uh, with the transformations is that you are super excited, you do it, and now how you go from this point and transform this in a lifestyle that is sustainable forever, yeah. right? That's, that's, the, that's the whole thing. And that's so, the price. Yeah, that's the education that must happen throughout those three months so that when you finish, you don't think, I'm done. Mm -hmm. You say, well, now I'm starting a new, uh, a new lifestyle journey moving forward. Yeah, exactly. Um, so knowing what to do is obviously important. You got to know what you're supposed to eat, how you should exercise, um, all these, all these like factual things that you need to know. But for the most part, it's, um, it's the other attributes that separate the people that can successfully change their physiques. What, um, because we provide the how, right? Like you, you're going to, you'll have more tools than you need. Probably by threefold. There's no excuse like you'd have everything you yeah, could yeah. possibly need. But what are, in your opinion, of those attributes that um, make people successful in being able to, to change their physiques? If it's to lose 100 pounds or 20 or whatever. I would say there are two key attributes. <clears throat> and a lot of people, they ask me about a third one that uh, I'm not going to mention. But two key attributes. One is consistent. We already talked about this. Uh, and the other one is discipline. And people ask, what about motivation? Well, motivation is not really an attribute. It's more like a consequence. Mm -hmm. And motivation will not be there all the time. A lot of people ask me, Are you, how do you keep motivated all the time? I say, I'm not. There are <laughs> days that I have wake up really feeling bad and yeah. I, I, I don't feel like doing, I don't feel like I'm progressing. It's, it's horrible. Yeah. But I have the discipline to get it done, the things that I need regardless. to do, regardless. Yeah. So discipline is really what's going to drive you. Uh, throughout the day and consistently executing that discipline yeah. uh, throughout months is really got, we're going to make change. So discipline and consistency, right? Yeah. I was uh, uh, watching the other day um, a documentary, uh, judo documentary about uh, the Japanese team. Uh, they are preparing for the uh, Tokyo Olympics uh, uh, next year. And uh, they were talking about they have to regain their status of best judo in the planet, right? Because okay. uh, I think Russia uh, it was uh, the last bigger uh, winner. And uh, they said that uh, one of the things that they, they preserve throughout those preparation is consistency and repetition. Mm -hmm. Repeating the same thing consistently over and over again. So they were talking about the, the Russian team. They even talked about the Brazilian team, uh, how they are very explosive and everything. But they said, well, for us, it's more about uh, constant repeating the same thing. So sometimes they repeat the same movement 100, 200 times. Mm -hmm. So they will be during one hour repeating exactly the same movement. <laughs> yeah. So that way, when they need, is right there. It's programmed. Yeah. yeah. So consistency. Yeah. You got to do it. Right, you gotta do it, and uh, and the uh, when you have those two things aligned, it will be much easier for you to get through bad days mm -hmm. because you don't have motivation. Now, when you are motivated, the day will be beautiful. Everything yeah. is gonna be great. Those are the so, fun fun days. Fun days. And yeah. So we use that day, you know, to go an extra mile to do to push yourself a little bit more. But knowing that not every day is gonna be a beautiful day with <laughs> super motivated and things sure. like that, right? So I think that those are the key attributes it's yeah. like me when i why now that i'm really focused on my jiu-jitsu uh there are days that are great i'm able to to tap people and and submit and all that but there are days that i just get beat all the time <laughs> right and uh you even have to appreciate those days sure because That's probably you learn more from those because days. you learn a lot i mean man what did i do wrong and then you start thinking about it right so those are the days that you are actually growing yeah more what about um i'll add my own two to the mix what about um an ownership mentality like i found that the people that we've seen that were successful they took responsibility they said it's my responsibility to finish this um and the ones that usually didn't finish or um, end up complaining about uh, the coaching and yeah the, the trainer this, the, this workout's not good or what about this research that you saw or they have all these things where they start to second guess everything and more or less blame the plan um not that the plan is perfect but i think the ones that take ownership um have a 
you know, much higher success rate. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and the, the other group of people is the group uh, of people that I call the what if, mm -hmm. right? Uh, the what if I do this? What if I follow that plan that I saw on the internet? What if I, I do just like this YouTube uh, video is telling me? What if? So they start to create that uh, net of possibilities mm -hmm. and they end up doing nothing. Yeah. Uh, it, there is a really good book called The Power of Overthinking, mm -hmm. which is terrible. Overthinking is terrible. Yeah. If you overthink, you're not going to get anything done. Sure. If you start thinking about each branch of scenarios that <laughs> could be on your way, sure. you're just not going to do it. Yeah. Right? So if you take on a ship and you follow the plan, right, and, and you say, this is my responsibility to follow this and I'm going to do it, no matter the noise that comes and say, hey, you, what about this? What about that? You know, abstract yourself from that and follow what you need to follow. And that's what's kind of, I think, beautiful about uh, the challenge format in taking a set amount of time to say, like, you know what, I might be interested in trying a ketogenic diet at some point. I might be interested in a running for weight loss program, whatever. That's cool. And I suggest people to, to try different things. But just for 12 weeks, commit to this and learn the lessons that this has to teach you and really see it through. Um, I think that's, you know, touching on what you do. What about um, the attribute of patience? You touched on it a little bit, I think, when people don't see the results right away and then they keep start. Keep consistency and keep doing it. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah the patient, uh, be being patient is is an important aspect, right? Because And it comes with consistency because when you are consistent, you sometimes do uh, everything without really the expectation of getting something out of it immediately mm -hmm. because you think on the long-term perspective. Yep. So being consistent already puts yourself in a mindset of longevity, right? I'm going to do this. There is no finish line. Uh, this is my lifestyle, and uh, I'm going to try to enjoy as much as I can. So you will become patient mm -hmm. just by executing and enjoying and living and learning all those experiences, right? Yeah. But if, if that's not the case, then you really need to leverage more your patient. I'm just saying that the patient is sometimes a side effect of being consistent. Sure, sure. You know. But uh, those that are looking for, looking in the mirror the day after they worked out <laughs> for, for the muscle, you know, yeah. that, that if you continue with that mentality, you're gonna be, get let down, yeah. you know, and it's gonna bother you and you're gonna feel like you're not getting ROI. Like, where is my return for right. all this effort if you're always looking for it? Right. You know, so I think it's imp so important to be patient um, and let the results come because it's not it's not rocket science, right? Like, you're going to, your and body's going to change. You're not going to have results over, overnight, yeah. you know. It's not going to How happen. long did it take you to lose 100 pounds? Uh, one full year consistently doing the same thing. Yeah. One full year. And then I started working on building muscle, you know, to compete. And I ended up competing only in 2014. Mm -hmm. So if you think about it, it were three years until I was ready. Yeah. From obese to competitive bodybuilding. Yes. Yeah. For, it was three years. Yeah. I mean, people, it, some people will never had the patience to, sure. you know, just getting prepared to prepare. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and at the same time that you've been patient with your approach, you've also probably got more skins on the wall than anyone <laughs> you know like you've accomplished an, a ridiculous amount of stuff in a certain amount of time but it, at the same time you you know you're being patient but you're ticking off accomplishments yeah. whereas the person that's always like moving to the next thing never really ever gets there yep i agree okay um shifting uh, focus back to you to, to wrap this up. So you're successful in many aspects of life athletically, like we've been talking about, um, you're competing in bodybuilding, competing now in jujitsu. Um, in your career, you've had a, a long time career with Microsoft. You're traveling the world, speaking on security, 22 books under your belt. That's crazy. Um, you've got a beautiful family and you still find time to join me in things like this and you play some rock and roll, some live rock here and there. How do you accomplish so much year after year and you know what can we expect to see from Yuri in the coming years? Uh, that's an interesting question because this week I was discussing uh, with a friend of mine that I just signed a book, uh, uh, next one, the number 23rd, uh, that I want to release this year. 
And uh, he was like, how can you get everything done and always excel on different areas? And uh, I said, it was not always like that. Mm -hmm. It starts with with you when we start uh, transforming my my body. Because as I said, I I used to have the tunnel vision of I need to do one thing well done and that's it. And that was my work. Mm -hmm. That was the only thing that I, I had focus on. But with time, I just realize that life is multi-dimension. You have so many things in life to do. Why do one only thing very well done, right? So why not have different things that you enjoy doing? The, the problem is that people nowadays, they try to multitask so much that they just touch on things, but they don't focus on doing those things well done. Jack of all trades, master of none. <laughs> So the thing is, uh, uh, if you are, if you p- put yourself in a situation that you're going to do something, go and do it really well. Mm-hmm. Go 100. percent If you're gonna write a book, focus and get the best book you can uh, write. Yeah. Right? If you're going to compete in bodybuilding, do your best and be on top three or win or whatever. But be there and do your best. L- leave nothing behind. Mm-hmm. That was my mindset when I w- I started jujitsu. In June 2018, I start one day. The next day, I was asking, when can I compete, right? <laughs> <laughs> because that's what I wanted. And uh, in 2019, I competed four times. I won gold in two uh, tournaments. I got bronze in another one and silver in another one. So it was a great year for me. But the, the mindset was always this. I, I'm going to go 100% at that moment. And then I step back, and now I'm going to my, write my book 100% here. So going... You know, with passion in everything that you do is, is to me is the key. If if I I've, if I'm not passionate about something, I'm probably not go 100 percent, and the result will be terrible. It, I, it's just not gonna happen, right? Yeah, sure. So first thing is be passionate. If you are willing to do something, you gotta be passionate and, and do as much as you can. Now I got my my green belt in judo, so my next step is step on a judo tournament for the first time this year. Oh wow, okay. I was already scheduled it's okay. next month. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> of course it is. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't know that. No, I didn't. <laughs> so yeah, I just read last week. Uh and I'm gonna do, you yeah. know, that's that's the that's the goal now. Yeah. Uh and then I'm gonna move to the next thing. So it, it's never stopped. I mean I'm not getting younger, I'm getting older. So I need to use it as much as time as I can to accomplish things where my 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 physique is still able to accomplish things that my mind wants to accomplish yeah. because i know when i'm 70 i'll probably not be able to do everything that i'm doing today sure. I, although i still want to do it uh, i still see myself competing until i'm dead yeah. you know yeah. but uh uh i think it's, it's great it keeps you alive and it keeps you with a purpose to live by mm-hmm. That's awesome, man. Well, it's been an absolute... Yeah, go ahead. One more thing. Yeah. You said what you should expect. Well, one of my goals for this is to get our book done. Yeah. <laughs> because we've been talking about this for a long time. And, uh, we got close we, to it once we, before. We, we already started uh, yep. a draft, and we have a good table of content. So we're going to take off. The, so 2020, this book is going to go out, no matter what. <laughs> yeah, and you said it on the podcast, so it has to happen. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now it's official. Yeah. No, I'm excited about it. And, you know, we've already done a bit of the writing, so yeah. that's going to be exciting. Probably yeah. a whole new podcast on its own. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, man, it's been an absolute pleasure to uh, to have a front row seat for all the stuff that you've been working on. Um, for those of you guys interested, um, stay tuned. We're going to be launching information about the 12-week empowerment challenge here very soon. Um, I'll be leading the challenge. Yuri um, will be one of the success mentors involved in there. Um, helping you guys along for that 12 weeks. Um, if people want to get a hold of you, um, I know you're on social media. You also write some blogs. Tell us about where people can find you online. Uh, f- for the fitness perspective, I'm more on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Uh, Wide the audience uh, uh, is my uh, IG. And for my professional career is basically Twitter, um, at Yuri the audience on Twitter. But that's more information security, technology type of stuff. What about the blogs? Are you doing blogs still or no? Uh, I st- I still have uh, an old blog that I need to uh, that I will revive when we start the the transformation challenge, uh, but I don't have a good um, URL to talk about. But if you cool. go to the IG, there is a link there. Okay, cool, great, Yuri. All right, man. Thank you for your time today, and uh, 
you guys uh, hit Yuri up for any questions, and we'll look forward to working with you in the next challenge. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it.